I'm Gokul Shekhar. I'm the head of ESG and climate change. And I'm responsible for the managing the portfolio of projects at the Carbon Collective Company. The Carbon Collective Company supports and collaborates with businesses that operate in a way that makes positive impacts on climate change, ecosystems, and communities worldwide. In addition, we work with clients to remove their complexity of, from their carbon journeys. Now, uh, let me uh, take you all back uh, to when uh, a meteor struck planet Earth millions of years ago, right? This apocalyptic natural disaster wiped out almost all of life on Earth, causing mass extinction and ending the Cretaceous period and the age of dinosaurs. The operational word here is natural disaster. Now, 66 million years later, we have wrecked the same degree of damage on this planet and its ecosystems. Now, this is a consequence of intentional action. The meteorite actually wiped out 75% of life on Earth, and we managed to outdo the same damage that hurtling space rock did within the last 50 years alone. Now, let that sink in. But just the big difference here is that we are so good at it, right? We are so good at it and so consistent. The destruction is ongoing. It's ongoing. And in the next 20 years, this process will be essentially complete. That means the consequences of our natural ecosystems for both land and marine life will be far more devastating and irreversible to a point of no return unless we start to act now. This will inevitably result in humanity's extinction in one day, just like the dinosaurs. Pardon me if you all think that I'm beating a dead horse with my apocalypse talk, uh, but this needs to be said over and over again till for the fact that people wake up and do something about it. So sorry, not sorry. The Earth flourished, right, again after the meteorite strike. Do you really think that we'll be so lucky the second time around? At the rate of how we are losing our natural ecosystems, it is suggested that we might just have about 10 years to remove the toxins out of this world, and about 20 years uh, before the predicted catastrophic collapse of the planet's ecosystem. Now, bring me a credible argument to debate what I've just said. I'll wait right here. For all of this talk on doom and gloom, uh, I will say, all is not lost. Not yet, but we need to act now and swiftly. Get the ball rolling with some stringent policies and some mindful life choices. Well, uh, many of you could still argue here, saying that we are looking for life on another planet. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we are. It's now very busy with this free speech right now. So. <laughs> Uh, so we will have to fend this for ourselves. I'm sure you guys know that world is now exploring this idea of going to net zero, right? Uh, the, you know, that means uh, closing the greenhouse gases uh, emissions to as zero as possible, right? Now, uh, the United States, the Middle East, uh, and Europe have already pledged to go net zero by 2050. And India has pledged to go to net zero by 2070. But we need to understand that Climate change is a global issue, not just for India. If we do better, the world does better. Uh, but then arises the next question, right? Uh, how, as citizens of this world, do we contribute to this goal? Let me start by giving you all an example, right? Uh, to reach to this venue, I actually traveled from Kalyanagar to Margadi Road via taxi today. And uh, I would have most probably emitted about 13 kilos of carbon so far. Uh, to go sustainable, I have two options with me. Take a taxi and reach the venue, and later reabsorb this emission uh, by supporting projects like tree plantations or any other man-made man projects. Now, what I've tried to do here is I've tried to offset my carbon footprint. When I say carbon footprint, it just means the amount of carbon dioxide released in the atmosphere as a result of my activity. All right? Now, uh, I can do this, which, uh, which, again, just goes to say what I've done right now is I've tried to pollute first 
and then I've tried to reabsorb those emissions. But there is a second option, and that is what is recommended and the need of R. That is to not pollute in the first place, uh, which means I would either have to opt for an electrical vehicle or any other medium without a tailpipe emission. I would also recommend you guys to actually check how much of carbon you guys have emitted uh, just by traveling to and fro from this venue. You've got websites. You can just put your distance you've covered. Uh, it'll give you an idea of how much carbon you've emitted. Uh, I'm sure it'll be alarming. It is alarming. Uh, by the way, uh, it's good to have a young set of crowd here because uh, one of the studies uh, by Google actually says that con consumers under 24 or Gen Zs, like you would call, like to call yourselves, uh, seek to be associated with companies only who have a well-defined sustainability goal. So companies don't just need to be sustainable to save the planet, but also they need to save their own business. This actually indicates in an eco-conscious generation of consumers who are actually demonstrating to be mindful and responsible by associating with themselves with companies which have an active focus on sustainability. I would say it's a right step uh, in the right direction. Now, uh, if you look at this chart, right, uh, we are currently working. Uh, here I would like to share our experience working with one of the few of the big polluters uh, right now. 31% of these organizations we have worked with are yet to set their net zero goal and are in a very early stages of planning. Uh, but over 50% of them have actually adopted the net zero goal, which I'd still see, uh, say is remarkably good to where we are. Uh, but when working with these companies, what we've actually understood is there is a strong desire for them to adopt these net zero policies. Uh, but this also comes from the buckling pressure of the regulatory bodies or from a strong demand from the consumers themselves. Now, uh, though the ideal, ideal way for us to go net zero would be through decarbonizing, which is a long process. But alternative is to reduce carbon emissions, and that can be achieved for, uh, through carbon offset projects. Now, some great examples of which, which are uh, a windmill project, a solar power project, a forestation projects, or even a cook stove projects. Now, uh, I'd like to present you how uh, our projects align with the sustainability development goals actually set by the United Nations. Now, uh, we're currently working with an MNC in India to offset one of their carbon uh, emissions through a cook stove project, right? And uh, just to let you know, this is how a traditional chula looks, and that is what we are speaking about when we are trying to demonstrate as an improved cook stove. So, before commencing the project, uh, we went to a couple of villages to do a feasibility study. So uh, people there use this uh, traditional cook stove, chula, which they would ca uh, call, right? So here we are in the village, and all I can see is a set of men sitting in one side and a set of women sitting in another side. And then I have uh, the sarpanch who's sitting with us. So obviously... Uh, we began uh, explaining the bene benefits of this improved cook stove, the mer merits of its use, and etc. And uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, we asked if they would be interested in investing around 2,000 rupees just to buy this cook stove, which would essentially save time, money, and most importantly, prevent the adverse effects of the chula on women's health. To our utter surprise, all we got was crickets. Nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing from the men. Nothing from the women. So we insisted the sarpanch, right? Uh, if, might be if he buys one. We assume that if he buys one, others may follow. Uh, and we asked him, would you want to buy one? And his response to us was, I don't think we need them. All right? But I was insistent and curious. So I asked him, what about your wife's health? And all he said was, if she dies, I'll marry another one. Uh, as you can imagine, much to my disbelief to this nonchalant uh, retort, the women started laughing. 
Yes, the women were laughing. This instance actually made it very clear where their priorities lie. That means first when a guy gets his salary, top of his chart comes his alcohol, then comes his mobile phones, then comes the DTH, then comes the male kids in the house, then comes the female kids in the house, then comes his parents, and last in the chain comes the wife. Uh, bare minimal, if at all, any value placed on these women who are actually an integral part of their lives and that they are so unaware of. It is just not the sheer volume of this manual labor these women endure during dawn and dusk, but also the trauma that is passed off uh, as a norm in their daily lives. Uh, as much as to, might be even to say, to go collect the firewood, right? Uh, the women need to, uh, they need to go to the forest to pick up a firewood. They are physically harassed for sexual favors by the officials guarding the forest. Uh, even if they go to pick up wood from the neighboring lands, they are abused physically and verbally by the landlords. And this is a common everyday occurrence and is taken in stride as madness. So we thought, right, there's so much more to be done here, and we have. We want to end this cycle and make a difference. So two targets in one arrow. So we have a project underway to adopt villages. Let's say if a company wants to offset about 40,000 tons of carbon, uh, we assist them in adopting a village which has about 40,000 families. All right. So these companies then donate these cookstoves, which have three benefits. One, improving the quality of the women uh, by improving their lives uh, and the women's families by empowering them. Two, the merits of the device itself as explained. Three, obviously the organization gets to offset their emission by eliminating a major portion of their carbon emissions at a very decently large scale. So uh, I'll have you know that these improved cookstoves save about one ton of carbon emitted every year. Uh, now, this should also bring us to a realization that a lot more needs to be done in a very short span of time uh, to prevent this irreversible damage to the incredible, incredible planet we have done. Uh, we as consumers can uh, actually support net zero ambition by supporting companies with a clear net zero goal. Uh, we as individuals should be aware of our carbon footprint and make efforts to reduce it especially when transportation, uh, energy consumption, shopping, and diet. Before I conclude, I'd urge each one of you guys uh, to Google search for websites that allow you to track your carbon footprint. Basically, you will just need to enter your lifestyle choices. For example, what kind of a car you drive, what kind of food you eat, how often do you fly, and uh, this will actually generate an approximate carbon footprint for you. And you compare this with your friends and family and collectively work towards reducing it. I'm sure you all are at least aware what we have right now, we are actually not entitled to. It is borrowed time and it is borrowed resources that we are obligated to, if not leave in a better state, if anything. Let's not plunder from our next generation. Let's go empty-handed and not carry the dirt of destroying this planet. We, would, we definitely don't need a handful of organizations or people making massive leaps, but we need billions of you guys taking baby steps. Thank you.